Hello, Matt Bisogno here and welcome to another video on GG's. Today we're going to look at the Profiler tab within the race cards. So let's get straight to it. Um, it lives in any race in the tabbing system across the top between full form and instant expert and it looks a little bit like this. Let's just let me reset some of these settings. So uh, when you go in, if you've never used it before, it will look like this. Now the top section, the filters section, is common with full form filters. So this section here, uh, we've replicated that. So it will be familiar if you're used to using this. Um, and yeah, that gives us quite a bit of functionality. In the actual profiler itself, so what this does, we should start with what it does, um, this is essentially a way of uh, slicing and dicing the form history for a horse, as in this case, or a jockey, or a trainer, or a sire. And we can look at um, the performance history by any of a raft of variables relating to the race conditions, or the track, or um, the humans involved, or various other things. Um, we can open and close all of the elements with the plus and minus buttons, and we can uh, open and close individual ones by clicking on the header block, like so. Uh, so that's how it works. Um, and then, of course, we can further refine our profiling activity by selecting uh, elements within the, the filter block at the top, like so. So when should you use the Profiler tab? Well, there, there, are, there are lots of times when it's good to use it and there are some times when it's um, probably not appropriate. So um, when it's not appropriate, it's perhaps easier to explain. Uh, in this race, we've got most of these are fairly exposed. In other words, they've had quite a few races already. Um, but a few of them, like Mr. Trevor and Lady of Desire, um, have le have had less goes and because they've uh, because they've been to the racetrack less times there is a smaller body of evidence with which to work and the consequence of that is that it's quite hard to draw meaningful inferences um, and not only is it quite hard to draw meaningful inferences it's probably quite dangerous to do that as well um, because the, the the evidence is not really um well, uh, horse racing evidence is never categorically um, uh, affirmative, but in these cases, it's it's far less, it's far more fluid and amorphous. Um, so when a horse hasn't hasn't, you know, if a horse has run like 30, 30 times, then probably you can you can build some profiles around that. And in actual fact, we have done some of that work historically, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but where horses had, you know, half a dozen runs, uh, three of them probably in maidens to get a handicap mark, you'll be in uh, precarious territory if you're trying to profile that horse at that stage. Now, what you can do is you can profile the, the horse's trainer um, uh, or sire and to a lesser degree jockey. Um, and I, I'm going to look at I'm going to look at sire. I just want to find um the person that I'm particularly interested in here. If I can do this, just let me move this out of the way. Uh, trainers. So I'm interested in a guy called Paul Midgley, who is a very good trainer. And um, what do I want to do? Let's go here select trainer and then find the right horse the one trained by Midgley there we go now um, this so what I can now see is um, in fact let me make this a bit bigger Got all this space let's use it um, what I can see now is um, Midgley's five-year record in all races basically I've used none of the filters and we can see um, the highlighted rows are the rows where which fit uh, this particular horse's race conditions today. So it's a soft ground 
five furlong um, class six race and we can see we've got soft five furlongs class six and it's at Beverly um, so that, that that's why those rows are highlighted now in this particular case I'm not too interested in the highlighted rows I'm actually just interested in the overall data for the variable so in this case going um, I want to start with let's close all these up I want to start with distance um, and we can see that in the case of Paul Midgley, who is a carefully selected um, uh, example, we can see that in the last five years, the overwhelming majority of his runners have been over five or six furlongs. And indeed, um, kind of two thirds of them have been at five furlongs. Um, we can further see that if we look at the win percent, that in these sprint races, um, well, we can see that in, in longer distance races, ignoring this very small sample size here, he's basically barely had a placed horse. Uh, Paul Midgley is exclusively a trainer of sprinters, or very nearly exclusively. And um, uh, in the main, he is almost exclusively, or he's majoritively a trainer of five furlong horses. Um, so that's interesting to know, but... Is that where the profit comes or or at least the least loss? Um, and we need to look at the ROI column for this. In fact, we should look at the each way percentage as well because um, this column will give us a greater sample size. Uh, there are, in a, in a let's say, in an eight horse race, there are three placed horses and only one winner. So um, place percentages just give us a bigger um, volume of data to look at. If we had percentage of rivals beaten, that would be better again and we will definitely get that added into profiler at some point um, but for now we need to look at the each way place percent and and you know obviously from a punting perspective the ROI column um, and we can see that um, I mean again ignoring we must ignore small sample sizes um, you know this is not material that he's had one winner from five over ten furlongs and it made a profit it's, 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 it's irrelevant and so too this this uh, 20 runner sample at five and a half furlongs it's it that that's not important we're looking at the big numbers and we're trying to infer uh, patterns from those and what we can see looking at the five furlong and the six furlong data these are big sample sizes um, certainly in the horse racing context we can see that at six furlongs um, Midgley has a, a negative 35 percent return on investment <laughs> not strong um, whereas at five furlongs, it's sort of around 11%. Again, you know, not bankable, obviously, but um, a, a reasonable starting position. So um, I'm explicitly interested in Midgley uh, five furlong runners. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the handicap button on and see if that makes any difference. It makes a, a kind of a negligible difference, really. It does make a difference to the ROI column. Um, strike rate is about the same and we're still dealing with most of a thousand um, in the sample so Midgley runs you know plenty in handicaps um, I wonder about flat versus all weather now we can check this by looking at the going section um, and we can see that the the all weather down at the bottom here seven percent strike rate five percent strike rate minus 24% ROI, minus 53% ROI. Um, the all-weather is not it is not a strong angle for Midgley five furlong handicappers. Um, let me just put this distance on here now. I'm going to stay with five furlongs, I think. Um, okay, that's, that's helpful. Um, interestingly, <laughs> he's actually made a small profit with his five furlong handicappers on the all-weather on the standard... Uh, going so that that's quite interesting um on the turf just i do just want to focus on the turf a minute we can see that he's he's from that kind of nine and a half percent strike rate um he's up to 12 percent on fast ground and um just pretty decent pretty decent all the way along in fairness um so that would be um the roi is still minus nine percent so we're, we're nowhere near a profitable angle but we're we're getting a feel for Midgley as a trainer of um, five furlong handicappers 
Um, and we can see that if we look at uh, class six, that's that's not um, not a great place for Midgley. And actually, between classes three and five, although again not profitable blindly, they they are basically break even between them across sort of uh, 500, 520 runners. So just in a short space of time, we can get, a, we're, we're not always looking, um, we're not always looking for directly bankable angles. We're looking to understand the actors in the game. And in this case, we're looking to understand uh, Paul Midgley. And we can see um, quite clearly that he's a trainer of five furlong handicappers um, and that um he he like most trainers <clears throat> has some horses that tend to run in the lowest class of race that um are, are quite hard to win with because they're moderate animals so but but outside of that grade um and perhaps outside of the top grade as well we can see that he's got you know respectable numbers across the board uh and if you fancied a horse in that context that there'd definitely be nothing in the over arching sample that would put you off um now i have talked about a couple of things to be wary of there um particularly looking at uh, win percentages in isolation they can be misleading um at least th these are reasonable sample sizes but you'll often find sort of 20 and 10 and and that's not enough data to be um getting uh to be trying to draw inferences from so again, yeah, the, the the each way strike rates are definitely more helpful, and, and and ROI will be helpful, but these need to be considered in the context of the sample size as well. So, you know, this minus a hundred on two runners is pointless. Um, so just just be aware of that kind of thing. Okay, so that's one example of a use case. Um, I was going to show you um, how to test out an angle. Well, actually, let's do it. Let's let's do this. Um, I want to look at Venetia Williams, um, and I want to see if it's right what they say about her heavy ground stayers. Um, now, first, so the first thing I've done here, sorry, I should explain this, um, is I have I've used the search box on the race cards to find Venetia Williams, and I've clicked this arrow next to her name to see if she has any upcoming runners and we can see that on the 17th which is two days ahead of when I'm recording this she's got a runner so I'm just going to click on that and then that's going to give me um, the chance to access the profiler for Venetia Williams so now I'm on the pro profiler but uh, it's on it's on a horse and it's on a horse trained by Dan Skelton so that's not helpful so I need to go to trainer click the trainer button here and then find Venetia from the list of trainer names here. So that's that's her. These nulls, by the way, we haven't got jockeys for these runners yet. So that's why um, you see these nulls here for a future race. OK, so this is the profile for Venetia Williams. And um, let me just, again, I need to remember to reset the data in the profiler. So I've put all these back to their default positions. Uh, and we've got, let me just... Uh, close and open all of those and so now I've got everything in here as well um, so I'm interested in uh, the theory I want to test is whether Venetia Williams's uh, heavy ground stayers are profitable um, now unfortunately this race is a two and a quarter mile race so it's not a staying race uh, it's also a novice hurdle which is not ideal I was probably more interested in handicap chases and it's being run the current the current going for market raisin on uh, Saturday is uh, good which is not heavy so we, we've essentially got none <laughs> none of the particular variables that I was interested in now we, we can of course look at heavy here and we can see that on the wind percentages uh, Venetia's heavy ground horses fare better in the round and on placed terms as well we need to keep in mind there that the sample sizes um, sorry the field sizes for heavy ground races are typically going to be smaller than for good and good to soft ground races. Um, most horses, most horses run on firmer surfaces than heavy. So um, we would expect a higher wind strike rate and we would expect a higher place strike rate just because there are less run runners to beat. 
um, that doesn't necessarily convert to profit. So again, we need to refer to our, our mate ROI here. Um, and we can see that this 17% here and for soft, the 14, well, nearly 15%, um, these are better figures than for good to soft and good and good to firm higher up. So we already see a kind of an uptick for these um, deep ground horses. Now, what about the distance consideration? Um, again, <clears throat> we're dealing with some reasonably small sample sizes in the middle, so caution is a forethought. But when we get to two and a half miles and up, um, certainly up to three and a quarter miles, we've got at least triple digit samples. Um, so that gives us some hope. And again, looking at the um, each way percentages, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't particularly pick out those longer distances as being um, something that happens the the play strike rate is is higher in, in that context because it's not you know at the <clears throat> around the two mile mark um venetia's horses uh have fared very well so um so that's that the problem we've got of course is that we're not looking at staying races and we're not looking at um uh heavy ground so how can we how can we address how can we tackle that issue what i do is i go to full form it's a bit of a circuitous route granted so i go to full form trainer uh, and i want to find venetia and then i want to find a fairly recent heavy ground race and the easiest way to do this is to just use the date selector to go to when i know there will have been heavy ground uh, let's just do that and then so i'm putting january to january this year um for venetia and i can now see this, these are her these are her runners um, during that period I haven't selected any going or anything um, and we can see from the going here where the heavy ground ones are and if we just pick out this Royal Pagai superb run that was so good um, this Royal Pagai run and then we can go to the profiler here and of course it's going to look exactly the same but importantly I can use the filters at the top now when I select the going filter um, so going is selected here as heavy but I want to look at all the other variables in through the prism of heavy going so if I select going now the, the going variable has only got heavy but importantly all of the other variables now um, show that variable but only on heavy going. So these distances, um, these are all races that were run on heavy. So now we can test our theory about uh, staying, Venetia staying horses um, uh, on heavy ground. And we can see, look, again, looking at the play strike rates, in actual fact here, we can see that there isn't, there isn't really any strong correlation. I mean, I guess from sort of two and a quarter miles down, um, it's it's generally a pretty positive picture. Um, what I wanted to do is I did want to look at, uh, we should do all national hunt. I don't think that's going to make much difference. And then handicaps, I, I'm kind of interested in handicaps mainly. Um, and that, you know, that does have a small bearing. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the ROI, we can see that, you know, definitely from, this is a small sample at two and a quarter, but, you know, notwithstanding that, I mean, Venetia has, does does have a good record in heavy ground handicaps, um, almost irrespective of of race dif distance. Um, so, so that's that's kind of half tested the theory. But um, I've got five year data set here, and sometimes we can have something. We can have a situation where an angle is long term profitable, um, but that over time, since o over a period of time, that that profitability has eroded, and um, so it makes sense to change the periodicity, change the date range to a shorter range to look for kind of consistency in these figures. And if we do that with um, uh, in this case, actually, what does that look like? about the same if we do that in this case so if we go from five years to two years we can see that 
the wind strike rate is slightly lower but pretty much the same the each way strike rate is is almost exactly the same um, but the ROI has fallen off a cliff so for five years the ROI is minus 11 percent for two years the ROI is minus 33 percent and the reason for this is because people know that Venetia Williams um, is a, a bit of a go-to in heavy ground uh, staying races so this shouldn't really it shouldn't come as a surprise to us a, a disappointment maybe but not as a surprise um now there is one that there is still one element um in all of this that we can hang our hats on for now at least and that is in field size um if we look at these uh, 2 to 7 runner races small fields we can see there's a profitable angle here two years uh, and also at one year and also at five years um, now again you know over time that's going to whittle away a little bit um, I did I was curious about why why this would be the case and without um, evidencing it on this video because I'll, I'll try and keep it a little bit shorter than normal um, most of Venetia's runners in these small fields either lead or race close to the pace and that that's definitely an advantage in um, deep ground races definitely an advantage in staying races um, it's, it's definitely an advantage generally in fact so um, the run style is is a, a positive indicator towards um, towards that profitability and again so you know we, we can't this this overall um, this overall perspective on heavy ground was was disappointing uh, even on the more recent you know particularly on the more recent sample size but um, there is still an angle here in the in the field size for small Venetia heavy ground runners in small fields is is an angle that's still playable and this is this is where we get to with it you know we've got a lot of variables here you've got to you've got to put a bit of time in to see what what's interesting and then when you found something that's interesting you've got to kind of ask yourself you've got to challenge yourself about whether that interesting angle is interesting just because it's got a black number in the profit and loss column as opposed to a red one or whether it's there's actually a logical you know th there's logic to support that angle and in the case of the small fields the fact that so many of them race from the front um, supports the notion that that they should do well because that is a you know that's a universal positive pretty much racing from the front uh, so that is yeah that's that's the Venetia angle um, other use cases so you can obviously do sire profiling in exactly the same way as this um, you can also do horse profiling as I said in in um, bigger uh, bigger fields and this is an example of a project we did together a few months back uh, some of you may remember this um, and it, it, in this post which I'll link to uh, I've linked to on the page where this video is um, there are there's um, there's a list of races from last year class two and three uh, handicaps big fields um, where you can click through and you can see you can start to profile directly from clicking through um, on here so if that's something that's interesting to you you can do that if you want to follow the the um, the progress of the horse profiles uh, this year then there is a page with the qualifiers there's only a non-runner today there's a looks like there might not be any tomorrow but below below these qualifiers is a is the full list which is sortable in various ways um, now I should caveat this by saying then they're, they're not doing very well this year um, so of course you know caveat emptor if you want to follow this stuff you do it with your eyes open and um, you, you know ultimately nobody is taking money out of your pocket if you want to bet these horses you make that decision um, check definitely check that um, the qualifier for instance ginger jam today um, who is a non-runner but we use him here's the here's the profile and you've got to check whether um, the profile data fits today's race so if, if it's a if it was a Catterick over seven furlongs in a class two today that would that would not be 
a good fit for the profile. But if you want to use this stuff, there's a link to it on the um, in the blog post where this video is. Okay, what else do I want to say? One more thing. I want to talk about a horse running today. Um, I want to I want to evidence one more use case, which is about um, unexposed horses or horses doing something a little bit different from what they've done previously, um, and how we can use the profiler to kind of understand to try to make that leap of faith in our understanding about um, the prospects of the horse in question. So. Uh, the 720 at Epsom, the Janet and Terry's 50th anniversary handicap. Congratulations to Janet and Terry. That is a a spectacular effort in fairness. Well played. Um, there's a horse down the bottom here called Our New Buddy. Uh, that's interesting. It was 7 to 1 when I was looking at it previously. So uh, clearly there's, there's some interest in it. Um, anyway, this HC2 means it's having a second run in a handicap. Uh, this race is over a mile and a half at Epsom. And um, we can see, if we look at our new buddy's form, that she has not done very well so far. Um, she she ran okay on her debut at Newbury in you know a fair race. <clears throat> in three runs subsequently, she's been beaten 12 lengths, albeit by a Group 1 horse, uh, 11 lengths. Uh, and actually, in fairness, was second on that occasion, so beaten by another smart one. And then on her debut in a handicap where she was sent off the 11 to 10 favourite, um, she finished no better than uh, a nine length seventh, having led that day. So a very different <clears throat> and probably, um, possibly at least unhelpful run style for her there. Uh, anyway, she's stepping up from 10 furlongs to a mile and a half today. And we don't really know how she might handle that. So, of course, we can use the profiler. And I'm going to select Sire, and I'm going to select our new buddy, whose Sire, I'm just going to reset these data here. Our new buddy's Sire is um, New Approach. And I'm going, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going, <coughs> if I can get the frogs out of my throat, I'm going to select Flat, Handicap, Age, and Distance. Um because I want to understand how new approaches have done in flat handicaps, three-year-olds, uh, because our new buddies are three-year-old, um, at a mile and a half. So let's just open these up now. And the going is kind of neither here nor there. The distance one is the first one that I'm interested in. Um, and we can see that this range, 17%, uh, is a is a strong uh, strike rate. Now we can compare that with um, with new approaches overall strike rate and that's something worth doing so if we go to uh, new approach here and we just look at the general five-year view we can see that is overall um, let's just do it on flat a bit unfair to include national hunt flat we can see that he's a 13 percent win rate sire um, which is very good um, and in the profile context we've selected, so mile and a half handicaps for three-year-olds on the flat, um, or three-year-old handicappers, this is a three-year-old plus race. Um, he, uh, what's happened here? Oh yeah, I need to go back to Sire. That's annoying. Um, and select that one again. Okay, uh, so we can see that um, that he's hitting at 17% um, on a reasonable sample size and 44% hitting the frame as well. Uh, small profit to uh, SP, which is not irrelevant, but um, we're really interested in whether whether the, the step up in trip is going to be useful for a daughter of new approach. And the suggestion is that it is. Um, there is other supporting data here which we could, we could use to um, add ballast to our case. But the other thing that I just wanted to point out here, which is, you know, obviously not directly relevant to... Um, to the profiler but of course the key thing is that we never we're never using a single tool or piece of data in isolation from all of the others we want to consider as much uh, knowledge as we can in the round to make a a, a sensible decision um, 
the trainer snippets for Rafe Beckett, who is an excellent trainer. Uh, he, he's quite a vocal guy, uh, not always to my taste, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but we can see that his trainer form generally is excellent. Um, and specifically in this second start in a handicap, he's got a rather good record, 22.5%, 35% place, um, strong profitability, um, powerful statistics all the way across the AEIV PRB board. So nothing in the trainer's MO would put you off this horse. Um, the sire looks a positive in terms of the step up in trip. Um, and uh, she's an interesting runner, our new buddy. Now, I haven't actually bet her yet, um, but we can see from our just our two bookmakers here that she's got blue there. Maybe just check on uh, the odds checker. Um, in fact, I'm not going to do that because I want to close this video up now. Um, but that is um, that is the profiler tool, and th those are some use cases. Uh, you can use them to do horse profiling, you can do, use them to do trainer or sire, or if you like jockey profiling. Um, you can save those profiles either to your QT angles, so you can once you've found a profile, you can replicate it in the query tool and save it as an angle. Uh, or you can add a trainer or a jockey or a sire or a horse to your tracker, and you can add a note um, as to the, the context in which that trainer, jockey, sire, horse is interesting. Um, and you can be notified of those each day. So essentially when you've done profile as a research tool and when you've done a bit of research, you can save that research and have it auto recalled uh, when it's contextually relevant. Um, and that's pretty powerful. So that's um, this was a bit longer than I intended. So apologies for that. I hope I hope the profiler is something that if you're not using already, you um, decide to to use uh, going forwards and um, yeah I hope it helps you to know more about a race and find some better winners even better winners than you are now this is Matt Bisogno saying thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now